I wonder if you can comment of how you see the le legislation dealing with producing the human resources you need to care for as many individuals as live in this country. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, the question, as you heard, was about human resources, and that's another area where I think almost everybody believes that we did we did some good things, but what will be needed uh, is it will be a much greater set of steps than was taken just in this one law. Uh, it's very clear, for example, on the primary care side that we have we really have created a wreck of our primary care system. We have a we have a very dysfunctional primary care system. And it's very clear that the evidence shows that the countries that have the strongest primary care systems also are the most cost-effective systems and have the highest outcomes. So if you look at just what we need on the primary care side alone, we clearly need many more primary care providers, not necessarily primary care physicians. So we really need to look at much greater training of nurse practitioners, for example. Uh, we have a major issue in the U.S. now with respect to not enough nursing faculty in nursing schools. We could probably admit and produce at least a, a couple hundred thousand more nurse, nursing students a year if we just had more faculty in our nursing schools. And we don't because there are no financial incentives to go be a, a, a rather poorly paid nursing faculty member when you can get more as a starting a salaried nurse at most hospitals. So we have a lot of dysfunction in the system that has to be addressed to get to down this road where we're producing more primary care providers alone, again, not necessarily primary care physicians. The, the, uh, there is in the law a workforce commission <laughs> created to look at this. You know, when all else fails, set up a commission to study it, so at least that is in it. Uh, we did take some steps to raise payment for primary care doctors under Medicare and under Medicaid, so that will help somewhat to create more incentives for people to stay in primary care as opposed to moving into specialty care. Um, we did, took some steps to shore up something called the National Health Service Corps, which is our program that uh, gives either tuition free tuition or uh, loan repayment provisions for people who will, will go to uh, health professional schools but then agree to go to underserved areas and practice for a certain period of time. So we did some things like this, but obviously we're going to have to do much, much more. And I, I've uh, been involved in a couple of efforts recently, including one sponsored by the Macy Foundation, to look seriously at this problem and begin to recommend what changes need to take place not just around payment, but even around at the, on the educational level, because it's pretty clear we have to figure out a new way to educate uh, our, new, our workforce. Um, not the least of the issues being uh, educating them to work in teams, because if we're gonna run these medical homes or accountable care organizations, it's really going to be a function of e educating people to be part of a team, as opposed to the doctor at the top of the pyramid while all the nurses and lab technicians and pharmacists scurry beneath carrying out the doctor's orders. So we're, we have a lot of work to do, and um, will we get there? I think, again, 10 years from now, we'll see some meaning, meaningful change. I'm not sure how much we'll see in the short term. Can you speak to the role of that voice of the people through social media, I, mean, I, know, I know there were a series of town hall meetings yep. that happened, but can you speak to that larger, how did the people get and how do we see the people being involved out over the next couple of years as we transform the system or as you transform the system, how that role will play out? Well, the administration is doing a lot of thinking about this because it's very clear there's a major disconnect between uh, what, what even the polls today appears to be overwhelming, well, I shouldn't say overwhelming, there's a slight majority uh, against the health reform plan. It's, it's down a bit from what it was a few weeks ago and months ago. There, so, but when you ask people about individual provisions of the legislation, they're in favor of it by large margins. So if you say, are you in favor of tax credits going to small business to help them provide coverage, it gets an 80% approval rating. But then if you say, do you hate the Obama health plan, people say, yes, I hate it, I hate it. You know, the, so the aggregate seems to be misunderstood, even though people like some of the individual provisions. So the administration is taking a lot of pains now to get the word out about what is 
in actually in the legislation, but it's interesting to me because they're ending up doing it as much as possible in the old media way. <laughs> not, not so much, I mean, I'm sure a lot is going, they're, they're, they are putting out their Twitter messages around these things as well, so it's not like they're neglecting the new media. But you know, nothing uh, counts quite as much as having somebody get up and give an old fashioned news conference with the television camera showing up and then even having that go viral on the web. And the administration is doing a lot now to make very clear to people that pieces of the legislation are already rolling out. For example, you may know that we, we passed several years ago a new drug benefit under Medicare, which was uniquely designed so that the, the benefit would pay a certain amount of your costs until they got to truly catastrophic levels, and at which point coverage would completely stop for several thousand dollars and then would pick up again when you got beyond that. This was known as the so-called donut hole, a real major American uh, contribution to benefit design, all designed to basically save, save money and make it so the benefit didn't cost that much. Well, since the donut hole was created, people have been talking about, well, now we have to close the donut hole by appropriating more money for this program over the years. This legislation takes steps to do that, but it can't do that real fast, so what happens this year is that if you are a Medicare recipient, you have very high drug costs, you will get a check in the mail from the government for $250. Well, not surprisingly, those checks are about to go out to everybody who's already fallen into the donut hole for this year. And so as the administration, as those things happen, they get up in, in the old fashioned way and the secretary says, here, see the check? Here's our first recipient who just got her check for the donut hole. You know, just the sort of the basic, you know, folks, here's your government, and guess what? We are, in fact, here to help you, and here's what we did. So I think for at least some time, there's going to be a lot of just sort of the classic reaching out in the old way to telegraph what is in these changes. Uh, over time, though, you know, if we get to a system of electronic health records, uh, obviously, and, and, and we know that now there are, what, 500 million people around the world on Facebook, you know, greater than the U.S. population. Those tools will increasingly be used to convey information to people, and hopefully we'll end up with a populace that understands a little bit more of what actually is in the legislation that we passed. We'll see.